All right, it's time to check in with Keith Bilber to see what kinds of questions that you have been leaving for me in the comments section, as well as in our My Two Cents at TBN.TV mailbox. Okay, Keith, I know you enjoy reading the tough ones, so let her rip. Uh, brace yourself. Yeah, Fred Woods from Washington on My Two Cents. You said that Biden is our president. I'm coming back to say, no, he isn't. He was not elected. He did not win. He is an imposter. Just because somebody steals your car doesn't make him the owner of that car. If he was legitimately elected as president, then yes, I would agree. But he wasn't. He's a traitor in the White House. Gee, Fred, what do you really think about Joe Biden's election? Look, I think many of us have some questions about the election, but my attitude is this. We have a process. It's not always perfect. Sometimes it's rotten, but it is a process. And when it's finished uh, and the election results are certified, whether we agree with them or not, or whether we think that they were all on the up and up, uh, we either accept them or we spend the rest of our lives with heartburn that is not good for us. I think that what we've got to do is to try to work on the future elections to make sure that what did happen and all those questions doesn't happen again. But we can't fix this one. Now, we can complain about it and we can do what the Democrats did for four years when they said that Trump wasn't their president. But I said then, I don't like that. I don't like it if we do it. I'm not going to do it. I will argue of Joe Biden's policies, which I think are not helpful to the country, certainly in the first few weeks, but I'm not going to deny that he is in fact the president. You know why? Because he lives in that big old white building called the White House and I don't. So there you go. All right. I bet you got some more over there, don't you, Keith? Eh, we'll ease up here a little okay. bit. Cole from Glenburn, no insults here. I love your show and your honesty. I do have a question, however. I want none of Biden's stimulus money. If I get any of it, I want to send it back with this message. I don't want your filthy money. Give this money to the workers whose livelihoods you destroyed. Now, can you tell me how to send that filthy lucre back? Thank you again for your honesty and commitment to freedom. Yeah, go ahead. Wow, give her, Nicole, give, give her my you. address. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, no, I was going to give her mine. <laughs> uh, just send it to Mike Huckabee, TBN, Hendersonville, Tennessee. It's all the address you need. That's what Billy Graham used to say. It's all the address you need. That's Actually, don't send it to me. If, if you get a stimulus check you don't want, you know, you don't have to take it. You can turn around and give it to the government, but they'll waste it. What I would say, if you get it and you don't want to keep it, give it to your church give it to a local charity, give it to a soup kitchen and help somebody because there are a lot of people who are truly hurting because of uh, the shutdown of COVID, especially people who work in restaurants and work in uh, retail. Tough, tough time. Okay. What else we got? Well, Vince says, you say you're for term limits. I was in favor before realizing they all get a pension after only a few terms. Wouldn't term limits bankrupt the, company by, or the country by paying more pensions? Well, there's a better answer than paying more pen pensions. Nobody who serves in Congress ought to ever get a pension for that. They ought to pay into Social Security, and they get the same Social Security benefits that any other employee gets, and that's it. No pensions, period. Take the pensions and the long-term things away, and I have a feeling folks may not want to stay quite so long. So... It's not about having more pensions. It's about having no pensions. That would be my suggestion. All right, Mr. Bilbrey. Beverly Painter. Uh oh get ready. Uh-oh. I'm tired of your sarcasm, Mr. Huckabee. I've tried to understand what it is you're trying to do, but I can't. You're neither funny nor informative, but you do seem to be angry. When your show comes on, I can't get to the remote fast enough. I was slow this time and heard some of your more rude comments about Biden. The worst thing to happen to this country was Trump. Well, gee, I thought the worst thing to happen to the country was me, given your uh, letter. Thank you so much for your love. Do I look angry to you? I don't think so. But if you think I am, I'm so happy. I really am. I'm happy that you have that remote. And I'm going to pray that God gives you the strength to get to it quicker so you can turn me off. Now, I do want to say to you that when you turn me off, I don't care what you think anymore because you turned me off. So 
thank you for turning me off. You're not even going to hear this, but all your friends will. And they'll say, that was a weird thing to say to that guy. That really was. So there you go. Have a lovely day. And I'm not angry. Promise I'm not. Well, Michael says, I stayed up late on election night watching the results for Pennsylvania. Now, when they stopped counting that evening, President Trump led 2.7 million votes to 2 million votes. The next morning, 1 million votes came in, and they were all for Sleepy Joe. When in the history of the world have 1 million people all agreed on the same thing? Michael, you're wondering the same thing that 74 million people in America have wondered. How in the world did that happen? You can't get two people in the same family to agree on something. How did all those million people just suddenly agree to vote exactly the same way between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m.? I have no clue how that could have happened. And I think you raise a very, very fascinating point to be sure. I appreciate all of your questions. Love hearing from you. Even if you don't like me, I still like hearing from you uh, because it's kind of fun. Reminds me of what it's like going to my Thanksgiving family dinner. It's the same kind of stuff I get there. So be sure to leave. You don't believe that, do you? <laughs> be sure to leave your questions. You can leave your comments or we love to say you can leave your vitriol. That's right, your vitriol. That sounds like a medicine, doesn't it? But you can leave that too. Leave it in the comments below, or you can send them to this email address, my two cents at tvn.tv. Now, if you want more videos like that one, hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell right next to it. And if you leave a comment, positive or negative, I'll be sure that my dog Toby sees it and responds to you in kind. <laughs>